Rahim. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a great honor uh, for me uh, to participate in this great symposium today about coagulation. Uh, and it is a great honor also to be the first one to introduce that, that uh, our return back to our mega uh, scientific courses in 2022. Uh, firstly, uh, it's a great honor for me to introduce my great prof, Dr. Yasser Zaglul, will uh, present a case discussion, uh, a case discussion. Really, Dr. Yasser worked as a senior consultant of anesthesia in Sheikh Khalifa Medical City. This is the back of hospital at night. His subspeciality is pediatric anesthesia, neuroanesthesia, as well as neurocritical care. Of course, it's a very operative medicine and eras are another important issue in, in his scientific journey. Welcome, Dr. Yasser. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Safa, and I'm uh, very happy to share in uh, this uh, symposium. And we will start uh, just something, uh, very little exercise before going to the heavy lectures with other uh, speakers. So this is a very short communication, about eight or 10 minutes, about case presentation of a patient on oral anticoagulant, and the patient is coming for emergency surgery. She is 93 years old lady and hypertensive and EC inhibitors and calcium channels blocker. On the same time, she is hypothyroidism in thyroxin 50 mic uh, OD. Atrial fibrillation on epixipan, this is a problem for us now. And she is a 2.5 milligram BID. She has history of transient ischemic attack twice, but fortunately she has complete recovery. Of course, the origin of this transient ischemic attack from some uh, microthrombi in the left atrium, which migrate to the brain, that's why they increased the uh, oral anticoagulant, or I think it was changed from warfarin to epixipan. She has history of hip fractures and it was done under spinal anesthesia without problem. At the same time, she is a bit ridden and she has chronic hyponatremia and it may be from malnutrition. Now this patient came for ER and she is disoriented or drowsy and but not talking, hypotensive, a little bit tachycardiac and atrial fibrillation in her ECG. Saturation 100% on face mask with 40% oxygen, chest bilateral lower zone cracks, which is more in the left side. And the abdomen is soft, not tender, bilateral lower limb edema. And this is the problem now. Grade three pressure sore over sacral area, infected and necrotic. So this is the source of septic shock or sepsis. And she's diagnosed of septic shock secondary to the infected bit source. Uh, this is, as you see, it is around 30 by 25 bit source. That is a major bit source. As, uh, can you see it is very necrotic and very bad uh, smell. Leukocytosis, anemia, platelet is okay. INR, of course, because of oral anticoagulant 3.8. EBTT is prolonged to 63. Hyponatremic 131 and potassium 5.2 borderline. And there is moderate increase in both urea and creatinine. So what is your management in this patient? Should we reverse here now what you are going to do? I will give you some idea about what we can discuss about in this patient. First, we have two major issues. As you know, the patient on oral anticoagulant with prolonged coagulation profile, the same time septic shock per se cause coagulopathy, even if the patient is not at 
anticoagulant or heparin or whatever the medication, there is a risk of bleeding and poagulopathy. Because you see, it is very huge area, should be debridement and should be removed. Later on, the patient with septic shock may develop disseminated intravascular coagulation. But our problem now about the Ibixipan, which is potent, highly selective anticoagulant, and the main action direct inhibition of activated factor 10, which is the, on the, is the end point of both intrinsic and extrinsic coagulation pathway. At the same time, Ibixipan has another, another effect by reducing the thrombin generation and inhibit thrombin-induced platelet aggregation. So three effects for this medication. And the most common use prevention of thrombosis in patients with uh, acute coronary syndrome and atrial fibrillation. As all oral anticoagulant, we should consider the drug interaction with the other categories. Some dual inhibitors increase the risk of bleeding. That means it is a competing at the same site of metabolism, the cytochrome B3A4. That's why increase the plasma level of abixipan, like deltiazem, nonesteroidal naproxen, antifungal like uh, ketoconazole, antiviral like uh, ritonavir, and clistramycin also may be the problem. Other medication may induce the cytochrome B3A4. That's why the metabolism of this medication will be high and the plasma level will be low and the antithrombotic or anticoagulation effect will be reduced like if the patient taking rifampicin, phenytoin, or carbamazepine. So in short, any patient an anticoagulant, whatever, direct anticoagulant or vitamin K antagonist like warfarin, you have to put in our mind the drug interaction. A very quick idea about the metabolism of abixipan after GIT absorption and going with the circulation, about 25% is eliminated from urine and 75% from the bile and stool. Now we saw the patient in ICU, general measures for septic shock are given, of course, early use of antibiotic, intravenous fluid resuscitation, nor AB was start at 0.7 mic per kg per minute, still an oxygen mask, which is satisfactory in 40%, because hemoglobin was 78, she started blood transfusion, one unit is given and the second one is running, still drowsy, but communicating, and we have, of course, high-risk patients. So we have team discussion between anesthesia, ICU, surgery, cardiology, and the neurology about the how, when, and how to reverse this oral anticoagulant. You may ask why neurology, because I mentioned earlier she has two transient ischemic attack. So if we stop the anticoagulant, there is still risk of stroke. That's why we included the neurology. The end result of this discussion, we have careful or even partial reversal of the abixipagan and, of course, bridging to the low molecular weight heparin after surgery. So my question now, when and how we can, should reverse the patient? Should we reverse here in ER, in ICU, or in OR? If she come to OR without reversal, I do the reversal with induction or intraoperative what should I give? Vitamin K, trinexamic acid, FFB, cryo, thrombin complex, concentrate, four factors, BCC, this is the same, but high level of factor seven, or fibrogen concentrate. Fibrogen, as you know, specifically used in patients with hypofibrogenemia, so we can exclude the fibrogen. So our option now, FFB, cryo, thrombin complex, concentrate, and the four factor BCC. All of them are proved to be effective in the reversal of oral anticoagulant with some degree of success different from one to other. And we selected to use it intraoperative. This is our decision because we let the surgeon to start and to see what is the bleeding. If it is significant high bleeding, we should reverse either full reversal or partial reversal according to the clinical surgical bleeding on site, not blindly to reverse the. So anesthesia is usual etomidate, sofentanil, ketamine, because she is in lateral position, 
we use the laryngeal mask. It is maybe discussion to intubate or to use laryngeal mask because this is very old lady and maybe intubation cause post-operative ventilation. And we arranged with surgeon to put him in semi-left lateral position. So there is no problem from LMA. And because of anesthesia, we have to increase nor AB to 1.2 mic per kg per minute. During starting the surgery, there is a moderate bleeding. And this time we start to reverse and we give 25 unit per kg to reverse the abexipa. At the end of surgery, there is excellent hemostasis and back to ICU. And you can see the difference now after surgery and very wide uh, raw area, maybe now 40 by 40. And you can see excellent hemostasis and no microvascular bleeding. So to know what we are the anesthesiologist doing when facing something like that, in this survey management of oral anticoagulant prior to the emergency surgery with major or with major bleeding. What is the practice? You may ask yourself, your colleague, you will find a lot of different uh, answers. That's why they did this survey under the American Society of Anesthesiologists and they included more than 2,000 patients and included 22 questions. And the question that you are using the prothrombin complex concentrate or FFB to reverse the anticoagulant for patient coming with severe bleeding or coming for emergency surgery. As you see, most of the responding uh, responder using the FFB. This is the blue one. And the BCC, this light blue in about one third of the patient, two third of the physician, whatever ICU or anesthesiologist are using FFB. This either to reverse vitamin K agonist like warfarin or direct oral anticoagulant like a big um, in our patient. And the other issue, they found that only 32% of the hospital have a protocol to reverse the anticoagulant. And 64, they don't have just coordination as actually in my hospital, we don't have a protocol. As we did, we discussed with the, all the team involved in the management of patient and we take uh, our decision. So in short, maybe it is better to have a protocol or some Gui local guideline to reverse the oral anticoagulant. Uh, well, how much should I give? According to the American Thrombosis Society, the recommended doses according to the INR, between two to four to give 25, between four to six to give 35, if INR more than six to give 50. We used in our patient 25, which is very very effective in reversal of the anticoagulant. The second point, as you know, sepsis in the coagulopathy, this is because three main problems, coagulation activation, endothelial cell damage, and the platelet aggregation. All these problems may cause DIC and coagulopathy, even the patient not in anticoagulant, we have to consider it in patient with sepsis or septic shock. Later on, if the infection is so severe and or not treated well, it will progress to disseminated intravascular coagulation. And of course, this hypercoagulable state and causing microthrombosis and the multi-organ dysfunction. Third point, major surgery per se may cause consumption and dilutional coagulopathy. And even this patient, not in sepsis or not in uh, anticoagulant, and she have a major surgery, she may develop consumption or dilutional co coagulopathy. And this, of course, precipitated with other factors like hypothermia, acidosis, anemia, and hypocalcemia. Now, I think a lot of you asking if this patient on anticoagulant and she may be a candidate for neuroaxial or regional anesthesia, how can I manage this patient? It is a very small question, very big answer. The answer comes this month, just published two days before, about the recommendations by the European Society of Anesthesia and Intensive Care in combination with the European Society of Regional Anesthesia as they published 40 recommendations. 
Actually, I didn't read all. It is very confusing. More than 33 pages, it may need two days to finish it. But I recommend every person that he have regional or neuroaxial anesthesia in every routine uh, work every day to read these recommendations. I may maybe summarize it later on, but anyway, you can read it. It is free, available online. So in short, FFB cryoprothrombin complex for a factor FBCC can be used for reversal of vitamin K antagonist and the oral and, uh, anticoagulations. Patient with severe sepsis may develop uh, coagulopathy and he may need other measures. You may need to transfuse platelets, uh, for example. Post-operative bleeding may occur after major surgery due to the consumption and delusional coagulopathy. And thank you very much for your attention.